The next is histopathology. So this is usually a well-defined uh, lobulated mass with the um, covered with the nasopharyngeal mucosa. It occurs here as a well-defined lobulated mass covered with nasopharyngeal mucosa. The color is red to grayish in color and has got a spongy appearance also. And the mean size is usually 4 cm. On an average, usual size is mean size is 4 cm. Gross. And regarding microscopy, histopathology. Okay, microscopy. JNA shows a fibrous stroma with the abundant vascular channels. That is why it is a red or beige in color and profuse bleeding also. So, uh, while you draw with the eosin and hematoxylin, this fibrous stroma uh, and also vascular channels, fibrous stroma and varying uh, size of vascular channels, different sizes. They, this is all in pink color and this nucleus will present as bluish dots, isn't it? And the importance of this vascular channels or endothelium is that they lack elastin fibers. Okay, elastin fibers are absent. Elastin fibers are absent. Okay, that you have to remember. And also the muscle layer usually can be either absent or it can be a pad like or it can be circumferential. Okay. Varying amount of uh, vascular channels of different sizes. Usually they are seen towards the periphery with the central abundant fibrous trauma. And this endothelium or the vascular channels lack elastin fibers and muscle layer is either absent or can be a pad like or can be circumferential. That is why these blood vessels will not contract and there is profuse bleeding. That is a presenting uh, symptom which is a profuse bleeding which is a presenting symptom of this JNA. Okay. And also this immunohistochemistry is important in the diagnosis of JNA. Immunohistochemistry there is uh, abundance of androgen receptors both in uh, vascular component and also in stromal component and also this uh, vascular endothelial growth factors they are also strain in vascular and, and stromal component then insulin like growth factor 2 and also there are so many IHC markers like uh, uh, vitamin D beta catenin etc. There are around uh, 14 to 15 ISA markers present. If you want, just uh, uh, refer that and study. And uh, also, this uh, JNA is more commonly seen in patients of familial adenomatous polyposis. In that case, this adenomatous polyposis called APC gene on chromosome uh, 5q has also been found to be an association with this uh, JNA. So, regarding histopathology, the grossly it is, it is a well-defined lobulated mass covered with nasopharyngeal mucosa having grayish to reddish in color, having a spongy uh, texture and in uh, microscopy it shows basically two components, an endothelium and vascular stroma component and also a stroma, fibrous stroma fibrous trauma and vascular component and this uh, endothelium or the vascular component lack elastin fibers and muscle layer that is why it is not contracting and causing profuse bleed next is clinical features it will be very easy by remembering the spread of JNA so the classical symptom is recurrent profuse epistaxis or nasal bleed and also progressive nasal block this is a classical symptom of JNA so, you know that it arises from spinobaltine foramen inside the nose. So, the first symptom will be ble bleeding. And also, I already told in microscopy that uh, uh, it has, this in, uh, vessels has no elastin or muscle layer, so it will not contract. So, this will cause recurrent painless uh, and profuse epistaxis. And 
there is there, there needs some intervention to control the bleeding also and along with that this will cause progressive nasal block for initially it will be um, unilateral nasal block and once either by blocking the coena or uh, pushing the septum towards the opposite side this will be bilateral nasal block also so the first is bleeding or epistaxis and next is nasal block first is it is uh, unilateral and later going for a bilateral nasal block and because there is this uh, nasal pathway is blocked there is a nasal twang to the uh, voice so voice changes it characteristically cause this typical plummy voice okay Someday you can see as the mass enlarges, it will push the soft palate downward. So there will be a bulge in the soft palate, or some can, sometime you can see the a mass hanging into the oropharynx through the uh, from the nasopharynx. And because this uh, nasal cavity is filled with mass, there is no drainage of secretions. So there will be abundant uh, nasal discharge, which can later uh, get secondary infected causing sinusitis also okay so, and as this mass fills the uh, end of nasal cavity it will block the olfactory area also so there will be hyposmia or anosmia okay then what will happen and uh, if it goes through the in, uh, in, intradermal fossa into the cheek area there can be facial swelling either in the cheek area or if it uh, goes into the ethmoid sinus, I already told you, there can be flattening of the nasal bridge and widening of the intercanal dis uh, distance and also proptosis leading to the characteristic frog face appearance. And uh, this patient is having uh, repeated bleeding from the nose, so there is chance of anemia. And it can, and also nasal, uh, correct nasal breathing is not happening. So there can be irritability or weakness. Okay. All this you can remember by thinking the spread. Then what? Headache can occur. What is the cause of this headache? Either it can be due to this weakness and irritability. Or if it involves the intracranial cavity, then also there is chance of headache. Or it can be due to uh, the sinusitis, which causes headache to the patient. Uh, and now, as I already told, it can either go to the orbit, ocular symptoms. When it goes to the orbit, what will happen? I already told you that uh, it can be either a proptosis or it can be a loss of vision. Or if it involves the extraocular muscles, there will be diplopia also. And then what? If it goes to the nasopharynx, what will happen? Uh, Eustachian tube uh, area will be uh, obstructed, leading to recurrent uh, secretory otitis media and conductive hearing loss. So, autological symptoms. Then, intracranial. If there is intracranial extension, again it can cause either headache or loss of consciousness or repeated seizures, etc. So, all these are the clinical features of JNA. Now, the investigations.